Porsche Taycan is Porsche's first EV vehicle and just like any other Porsche, it is an amazing car to drive, freaking amazing to drive. But is it really safe from hackers though? As a cybersecurity professional, I wanted to find out if it is probably being attacked by similar things as what we've heard earlier this year in January 22, where hackers were able to remotely turn on headlights, increase the volume of a car, shut down charging, do a lot of things basically to a remote EV vehicle. And just in case you're wondering, Ashish, this is not a Tesla, this is a Porsche, Porsche Taycan. Yes, I know. But if you know the story of the hacker, that hacker was able to hack into the Tesla and they're still working on resolving it. So you can imagine curious questions are being asked about every other EV vehicle. And for this video, I borrowed a Porsche Taycan so I can come up with an answer for whether it really is Porsche Taycan safe from hackers. Disclaimer, I did not do anything illegal well, I just read up stuff online. I did not do anything illegal. So it suffice to say there were no Teslas or Porsche Taycans harmed during the making of this video. We just did what the researchers have already disclosed on the internet. Primarily, I focused on two different things. The first one was hackers were able to identify that a vulnerability in the common charging system or CCS used by a high voltage DC charger, which you could put it plug into a car and Porsche Taycan has that same model. So I definitely wanted to check that out. The second one that we did was a remote keyless hack that came in where people were able to replay the signal of your key and we're able to get into the car because of the remote keyless option that exists in most cars these days. In case you have a security disclosure for Porsche, you should definitely check out the end of the video where we talk about how you can report a security vulnerability to Porsche. Let's start with the first one. So the first hack where I had, had to find a DC charger, I had to buy, get a Taycan, so I borrowed a Taycan, so that's pretty good. For me to have the first hack, I had to have three things in mind. Porsche Taycan, tick, so I had that definitely. Second one being, I wanted to find a software defined radio, which could produce a frequency of one watt. Now, without going in, into the details of what they have done and how it happened, the third thing you need is an obvious DC charger, which is really hard to find in Australia. So I would have started by looking for a software defined radio first, but for some reason I felt that there are not that many electric cars in Australia. So I should probably look for the DC chargers first. And turns out the one that is closest to me is a long way away for me to charge. So considering I only had one day with this car, I wanted to make the most of it. I was not gonna go more than half of my charge all the way to the other end so I can test this theory out. So what I realized, I just did some Google searches and find out there are very limited DC charges across Australia and especially across Melbourne. So that was gonna be a fail irrespective of me finding a software defined radio. That's okay. My first attempt at hacking a Porsche Taycan may have been a fail, but you know what the saying with hackers is, right? When one door closes, another door opens. <laughs> I don't think they say that, but in my head, I have the second plan B still to go. So my plan B was to find out if I can have a remote keyless replay, which is basically, you would have seen those videos online where people just go around your garage door and they are able to replicate the same signal that is sent by your keyless fob, which is your car keys. And even though they're outside the house, the car assumes that, hey, you're actually technically outside even though the car keys are inside the house. I was gonna do that and I did some research on it. So it turns out in April, 2021, Porsche, Audi, Jaguar, Land Rover, and Mercedes all went through a security review for their keyless fobs. And there's a company which is called Thatcham Research. They gave them a superior rating because they did not find a vulnerability. So plan B failed. So it turns out the keyless option was a bust as well, but that's okay. Just because my plan B failed doesn't mean a hacker would give up. A hacker never gives up. A hacker only tries to find a bug harder. So I called in a colleague of mine who's also a cybersecurity professional like me, a hacker like me, and I decided I'm gonna go out with him for a coffee as hackers do and brainstorm what does it take to hack a Porsche Taycan. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out if the Porsche Taycan is safe. We decided, we're just gonna tag team. I called him out for a coffee as hackers do and we decided to brainstorm how else can we find a way to hack this because currently the tally for hacker versus Porsche is hacker zero, Porsche one. She's not a great score for me, so I'm not really happy about it. Did you know that you have to have a Porsche ID to even have a car assigned to you? Who would have known? All that and a lot more in the part two of this video series. Me and my colleague, we are gonna go into some of the details of what can we do within the legal boundary to identify a vulnerability in Porsche Taycan and 
disclose it for you so you understand is it safe for you from hackers. By the way, if you have a vulnerability that you want to disclose to Porsche, I will leave a link in the description for how you can report that vulnerability to Porsche or you can report it to me. I'm happy to do it on your behalf if that helps you in any way. That's all for this video. If you like to be notified when we release a part two, which should be next week, please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified when the new video comes out. I'll see you in the next part. Peace.